Democratic USA, incredibly powerful. Look at the amount of the world that, that we conquered. And, uh, well, that's quite impressive. It's only June 1941, so we have the entire game ahead of us. Hi, guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are continuing our run with Democratic USA and we are picking back up exactly where we left the last time. By the way, if you missed the first video, you can find a link to the playlist in the description, so make sure to check it out. So after defeating the Axis, I said it is good that Italy is a subject of the UK. And it's finally time to show you why it's a good thing. Now of course the basic idea is that we want to take what the Allies have. However, as you know, it is a bit more difficult to justify with democratic countries. As you can see, we cannot justify war goals unless that country has generated some world tension, which the Allies did not do. Except for Italy, which very conveniently is a puppet of the United Kingdom. What we're going to do now is we're going to leave the Allies and we're going to start justifying a war goal on Italy. So we're going to get ready to betray and fight our former allies. And then we're also going to take care of Japan. Now keep in mind that uh, you can find uh, focuses and researches in the description of this video, as well as a link to the unedited version. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask in the comments. Also, please let me know what you think about this run and if you would like me to continue with more episodes. Finally, if you have been following the channel and enjoying my content, please do not forget to like the video and subscribe. It really helps uh, the channel grow faster, which means I will be able to dedicate more time to it and make even more content for you guys. Now that's really all for the introduction, so let's get ready to challenge the allies. So other than leaving the allies and uh, justifying on Italy, what we need to do now is uh, we need to set up our armies a bit differently. Now let's start by taking care of our fleets. In addition to the original ones, now we also have some extra fleets which we stole from the Axis in the Peace Conference. And uh, what I want to do is I want to merge all of them into only one fleet for now, which we're going to send uh, somewhere like here. And then we're going to use this fleet uh, to support our naval invasion of the United Kingdom. For the naval invasion of the United Kingdom, we're going to use our marines and we're going to go for groups of uh, five from this uh, harbor here to the area of uh, Newcastle Hull. So we start from here and we go for something like this. Uh, these ones are groups of five, the last one is a group of four. Now our tanks, uh, we want them to be ready to follow the uh, infantry, the marines, uh, but we don't want to, them to be in the same place otherwise we'll run out of supplies. Uh, so somewhere like this uh, or Hanover should be fine. As for the defensive armies, we actually need them in the mainland because when we fight the allies, we will also be at war with Canada and Mexico. So we do need to defend our mainland. So one defensive army I will assign somewhere like here. The other defensive army can go in on the other side of the border with Canada, somewhere like here. And the last one will be at the border with Mexico. And it should be enough not to have too many, too many problems with Mexico and, and Canada. With our free civilian factories, we are going to start preparing for what comes next, uh, which is going to be Japan. And for that, we want uh, full infrastructures in here. We want uh, full air bases in here. And we want uh, railways uh, to connect uh, these uh, supply hubs. Tier 5 railways, ideally. Uh, now, we also want this stuff to be the absolute uh, priority at the moment. Next, uh, we're going to replace uh, motorized with mechanized, or at least we're going to start uh, uh, doing that. Uh, yeah, we don't have enough for the last one, but that's good enough. So uh, as soon as possible, we'll uh, replace also the last uh, motorized uh, with, uh, with mechanized. And uh, we are also going to use some political power for the statehoods. We are going to grant all of them. Uh, we are doing fine with the Congress. If you're not, uh, you can use uh, some additional small lobbying effort. And then we can assign uh, some uh, medals uh, with the remaining uh, political power that we have here. I would suggest using the supply consumption medals uh, because supplies uh, are the most important thing in the game. Now another thing we want to do as soon as we get uh, the army experience for it uh, is we want to add uh, two more tank battalions in here and replace the motorized artillery so to bring these uh, to a total combat width of uh, 36. We're going to do it uh, in a little bit. 
all right here we go so this is the final uh, template for armored divisions as you can see combat width of uh, 36 with the uh, civilian factories uh, if you have any free ones you can use them to build uh, more military factories in the 100 percent provinces uh, and then uh, from now on they are basically free uh, though something i would suggest doing is also improving the infrastructures uh, and uh, uh, the air bases uh, in uh, this part of germany because uh, we may use it uh, later on if we go after the Soviet Union. Okay, now that our fleet is entirely here, we are going to split them into uh, two fleets. Again, uh, two separate theaters. Uh, one will be on naval invasion support in here, and the other one will be on uh, strike force in here. And actually, if the UK engages, uh, we can defeat uh, the Royal Navy with our current fleet, uh, so that's, go that's not going to be a problem. Let's also make sure to assign and deploy all uh, planes and uh, train them. Now, once again, ideally, we want uh, most of them to be with our marines uh, because they are going to be fighting uh, the most uh, in the UK. Okay, and uh, as you get the elections, I would suggest voting for the Democrats again. After all, we are going for a full democratic run. Okay, when you get this event, uh, I suggest you do deploy the uh, Flying Tigers. Uh, because we are going to get some war support from it, which is nice. I used uh, some additional uh, additional decisions to uh, regain the majority in the Congress. Uh, because ideally at this point uh, I like to take amend the budget and uh, research grants. Uh, it's not mandatory, but uh, yeah. Usually you're able to do this before the war. And it's not our case, uh, because we just got our claim on uh, Italy. Which means uh, we are ready to start the war against the Allies. I would suggest, as usual, making a save at this point. And we can start going after the Allies. So we declare war on uh, Italy. And automatically that means we are at war with all of the Allies. And then we start uh, the naval invasion support. And the strike force with our two navies. We can start the naval invasion right away. We shouldn't have any issues uh, earning the naval superiority. What we will have issues with is uh, getting enough uh, resources while uh, we are at war. With the allies, because uh, probably we are not going to be able to import uh, much. And let's see what we can do about it. But the war will not be very long in any case, uh, so no need to worry about it. Yeah, the music is not really the right music for fighting the allies, but uh, that's okay. And I wouldn't expect much uh, resistance in the un in the UK. They have a history of uh, disappointing us uh, with very weak defenses of the mainland. And this time uh, is no different. Okay, so you can use uh, marines uh, to end the UK uh, as fast as possible. And I would also at this point uh, send over the tanks. But by the time they get there, probably the marines will have done most of the work. After all, we have very good marines for a reason. So let's use them. And yeah, rubber. You can forget about rubber. It's okay. It doesn't matter. I wouldn't worry too much about resources during the war. As soon as the tanks get here, you can start attacking with them. As you can see, the UK is not prepared. They will try to send back some divisions, but it will take them some time. And by the time they do, they will not have anything to defend in here anymore. Okay, the UK should go down very soon. I think they probably already down, they just didn't realize uh, yet. Okay, after the UK is uh, done, we're going to prepare another D-Day. So <laughs> we go for Normandy for the second time in this run, but this time against France. And this time to do it a bit faster, I would go with groups of three instead. Also because France doesn't have the strength of uh, Germany, so we don't need to worry that much. And in this case too, we prepare the tanks a little bit behind, uh, not to steal uh, supplies uh, from our marines. Uh, and we start preparing the fleet uh, for the naval invasion. Alright, our naval invasion is uh, ready, so let's uh, set our fleets on uh, naval invasion support and strike force. And let's start uh, D-Day number 2. I would also start sending our tanks uh, to the southern part of the coast, ready to reinforce our marines. Ooh, the French are defending. Not very well. Not very much. They kinda attempted to defend. I can see the effort. I can appreciate the effort. 
Okay, after disembarking with our marines, uh, we want to start taking France. Now, unlike in uh, World War II, now it will take a bit longer to take down France, as they need to go all the way down to less than 20% uh, victory points. That's not Attack. going to be an issue, however, because they don't have divisions. That being said, uh, we want to farm uh, some uh, uh, war score. What do I mean by war score? Actually, not really this one, uh, the war participation, because this one we already have. Uh, we want to have a bit more points at the end of the war, because we will need uh, to puppet a lot of stuff in the world. Uh, by the way, let me show you quickly what we are at war with. So basically, we are currently at war with the entire world. Except the entire world uh, sucks, so uh, they, they don't put up much of a fight. But we will need to puppet all of that stuff later on. So uh, taking down the Benelux will help a bit uh, in terms of points at the end of the war. So we're going to do that. Other than that, we're going to use marines to just push into France more or less freely, because as you can see, there is no resistance basically. And then we're going to use the tanks to take care of uh, the Benelux very quickly, and then they are going to help marines uh, do their stuff even faster. Belgium is down. Netherlands down. Oh, by the way, the UK engaged us, but as you can see, our fleet is completely destroying their fleet. Let's uh, keep an eye on uh, France, uh, just uh, to make a save, as usual, before ending a war. It's something I would always recommend doing. You know, just in case. Uh, you never know if uh, you mess up uh, the peace conference. Uh, you don't want to do the entire war again. And I think uh, taking Marseille will uh, end uh, the war. Let's see. Final casualties, uh, 2k, 300k. Well, they didn't have units, so basically this is a war without casualties. And that's it. World War II versus the Allies is over. It was faster than uh, Germany ever dreamed. <laughs> so now what we need to do is uh, we need to do a lot of uh, puppeting and then some uh, war reparations. Probably will not have enough points to puppet and take war reparations from everything. I would say the priority is to puppet everything. So first of all I'm going to do that. Okay, we puppeted everything. We still have some points left, uh, which we're going to use on uh, war reparations. Again, remember not to take uh, resource rights uh, because we have free trade, so we will lose uh, all of those resources immediately. Okay, we could get uh, war reparations from everyone, which is also great. At this point, uh, we can just take some of the uh, Royal Navy with the remaining points. And I would say we are pretty happy with what we got, uh, so we can confirm. Now, let's see. What we got at this point, uh, the best way to see this is uh, with the supply map mod. So everything that has uh, supplies uh, is under our control, which as you can see is a fair amount of the world. Now, unfortunately, with Democratic USA, uh, you cannot really go for a full board conquest uh, or it's very difficult to do so because once again, we cannot justify war goals on countries which did not uh, generate war tension. Now, this part of the run uh, is where we start feeling the difference uh, with uh, fascist USA. Uh, in my next guide, uh, I will show you basically the same run uh, with basically the same strategy, but while uh, going fascist. And you will see that until this point, uh, Democratic USA performs uh, fairly better, in the sense that we have a better economy, more production, uh, better units, uh, better everything. When we get to this point, uh, the difference and the advantages of uh, being fascist, which, as you know, is much better than being democratic, uh, start uh, to pull off uh, an advantage for fascist USA. But we're not done yet, uh, because we have Japan to take care of uh, before we can consider this part of the run uh, completed. Then, of course, uh, if you wanted, uh, you may not be able to justify on uh, all countries, uh, but we can still justify on China, after Japan, and on the Soviet Union. So. This run is also far from over. If you want me to continue, make sure to let me know in the comments. Now, at this point, we are going to start planning a naval invasion of Japan from the Philippines. And we are also going to start justifying a war goal on Japan. It only takes 30 days. It will actually take us much longer to be ready for it. Because our divisions will have to go quite a long way to get here. Now, with the marines, we can start planning the naval invasion right away. And we are going for groups of six. And we're going from this harbor here to the area of uh, Nagasaki. Alright, so these are all uh, groups of six going to naval invade uh, Nagasaki. 
you sure? And then with tanks, uh, it's up to you. If you want, uh, you can send tanks over as well. It's usually not necessary. If you don't send tanks, uh, you may want to send uh, a defensive army uh, to the Philippines to protect them from uh, potential naval inv counter naval invasions from Japan. But overall, this stuff should not be needed. Uh, in general, well, maybe I will send a, naval, a defensive army just in case. Uh, as for our tanks, I think they are done for this uh, part of the run. And if we use them, we will use them against the Soviet Union a bit later. So we can keep them in here for now. We can also send uh, back uh, to Europe uh, the other defensive armies. Now, we also want to send uh, planes uh, to the Philippines, but we don't want to send uh, too many. So I would send all of the CAS. Uh, should be about 2,000. And uh, we can send them on a naval strike and assign them uh, to the South China Sea. And then we're going to take about uh, 2,000 fighters and assign them to the other airport we have in here. And they can also be assigned uh, to the South China Sea. And then it's time to take care of our navies. We can send all of the navies uh, to Manila and then uh, we'll take care of them once they are there. We're also going to start uh, recruiting another 12 armored divisions. And we're going to change uh, something in terms of production. We don't need uh, this much uh, mechanized equipment anymore. So we're going to decrease the production to 25. We're going to increase the production of uh, C2 to 25. And then everything else will go to our T2 tanks. Uh, we're also going to upgrade all of the designs which need upgrading. So for example, the F2 is okay. T2 can be upgraded. Talking about MIOs, of course. The last thing we need to do is we need to adjust uh, trade and uh, that's a lot of trade that we need to get uh, but now we can get it entirely from our subjects because we puppeted most of the world so we can take some uh, from france dutch east indies the only advice that i give you is uh, to spread them around not to get everything from the same country so from france we're already getting uh, aluminum i think so take uh, the iron uh, from or the steel from uh, britain and maybe from uh, germany not all from the same, because the more you import from the same, the more uh, autonomy they will gain. And being democratic, another disadvantage of being uh, democratic is the autonomy of the subjects constantly, automatically increases. So in order to counter that, uh, it's better to spread around, uh, build uh, in your subjects, and then we'll also pick a dedicated focus for that. Uh, initially, you will not be able to import fully from them, uh, and that's mostly because uh, I think the trade efficiency is still not uh, entirely fixed. But this will fix over a couple of weeks. Now, I would really love Marines to go there in a more efficient way, but they just jump around, hop from one country to another all the way until they get uh, to uh, the Philippines. Uh, probably there is a better way to move them there, but uh, it's all right, you know. I cannot be bothered with that. If we move them there differently, maybe we cannot plan the naval invasion at the same time. This is another weird thing about OI4, by the way. They can, you can plan a naval invasion while the divisions are not even there. But when they get there, suddenly, the naval invasion will be, will be perfectly planned. Okay, we got the claim on Japan, but we are not ready yet. We got the war plan orange, which will be great once we start the war. All right, now we have a fleet uh, which is big enough uh, to probably get uh, the naval superiority right away without issues. Uh, but should you have any issues, what I suggest doing is uh, you send them, uh, you set them on uh, patrol in these two regions, uh, and then after a while you will easily get uh, the naval superiority. But we can finally pick uh, Amanda budget and uh, research grants. I would have picked it a bit earlier, but we really couldn't get the majority at the Congress. Okay, our Marines are finally in a position. They don't have supplies, they don't have uh, organization, so we are going to need to wait a little bit longer for that. But in the meantime, uh, we can declare war on uh, Japan and we can start uh, making sure that we will get uh, the naval superiority. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked. Yeah, instead of being suddenly and deliberately attacked uh, in, uh, in the Hawaii, we actually suddenly and deliberately attacked Japan for no reason. That's okay, you know, we need to export some uh, democracy. That's what we are famous for, after all. We just need uh, one or two battles, and then uh, we will easily get uh, the naval supremacy. Okay, now everything is green, which means uh, we got uh, the naval superiority. And we can start our naval invasion, and I would also suggest at this point starting the 
War Plan Orange decision to, be, to get some additional buffs against uh, Japan. The other thing we can do at this point is we can select all of the airplanes we have in here and we can assign them to the Marines so that they help during the naval invasion. There is a chance that they will intercept some of our divisions and uh, we'll get some casualties. And we don't mind. Actually, that's not bad. In the sense that uh, uh, here the war score is all in favor of uh, China. And getting some war score through having casualties, it's actually not too bad for us. So if we get some additional casualties, uh, we're going to take them. It's quite Machiavellian, so I like the idea. But after we land in Japan, uh, this war will be basically over. It's very, very easy to take care of Japan, especially with our very good uh, marines. Okay, our marines entirely landed on uh, the coast of Japan. And now we're going to use them to take uh, the mainland Japan. It's going to be easy, as I mentioned. Yes, it just uh, requires a little bit of micromanagement uh, because uh, it's a little tricky, the positioning uh, and the fronts especially. So it's better to manually uh, take uh, Shikoku, for example, while the, divi the other divisions advance uh, in the north uh, to Hiroshima and Osaka. Yes, sir. Okay, after you take uh, War Plan White, uh, which we're going to use uh, if we attack the Soviet Union, what I would suggest is just picking one of the continuous focuses uh, and uh, suppressed subjects can be quite good uh, in case of the democratic countries uh, because as I said uh, subjects uh, automatically gain uh, uh, freedom uh, when uh, uh, you are democratic and in this, way, in this way we can counter it a little bit otherwise all of these countries will at some point uh, be free which is not great. The other way to counter that is, of course, to invest uh, in uh, buildings in those countries. But this is one of the main uh, disadvantages of uh, being democratic. Not the only one, however, because by this point of the run, uh, if we played as fascist, uh, we would have significantly better economy. A significantly better economy in terms of uh, the amount of factories we get from uh, our puppets. Uh, again, I will share the guide with you so you can compare directly the two the two runs and of course fascist is better And we are getting closer to Tokyo as soon as uh, Tokyo Falls uh, Japan will be done I Would not necessarily make a save at this point because the peace conference against Japan is uh, quite straightforward Unfortunately, we don't have any war score or we don't have much Because China has almost all of it uh, so what we can do is we can try to puppet as much of uh, mainland Japan as possible and then uh, just accept that China will take the rest. Now usually I'm able to puppet the entire southern part of Japan or let's say uh, western part of Japan. And usually yeah, China takes the northern part. So something like this, we were able to puppet uh, this part of Japan entirely. And then another thing I would like to do is I would like to puppet Okinawa because that's where I spend uh, my uh, vacations every year so i would like to have uh, okinawa among my puppets now you may not know but i am uh, i live in tokyo so this is personal i want tokyo and i want okinawa and then uh, let's take some of the islands which uh, the uh, chinese are not taking yet but yeah okinawa we are going to fight for yes we got okinawa okay i'm very happy iwo jima despite the fact that it was a very important strategic island in world war ii we can leave it to China, that's okay. And we can save uh, the few remaining score points uh, to take some war reparations. That's it, we cannot take anything else. So this is the end of the war with Japan. Japan is also our puppet at this point, or partially at least. And uh, we can justify war goals on uh, China and on the Soviet Union for sure. I'm not sure if we can do it on uh, maybe on Peru as well. Yeah, because they expanded a little bit. We probably cannot do it on uh, most other countries in the world. So Peru, China and uh, the Soviet Union are the only countries that we can attack. And in which we can expand from now on as uh, a democratic uh, country. So we cannot go for a full war conquest. 
But if you're interested in seeing how this run continues, uh, we can do it. Uh, we can go for the Soviet Union. We can go for China. One more thing, however, is uh, I would suggest waiting for the upcoming Fascist USA Guide, which I will uh, release uh, next week. And uh, I think it will be more fun uh, to continue that run uh, if we decide to continue one of the two. So let's wait for that one. And then once uh, both uh, guides are completed and uh, available for you guys, uh, I will uh, start a poll. And uh, we'll see if you want me to continue for a full world conquest or to defeat the last great powers with one of the two. We'll go on and do that. Now that's all for this part of the run. Uh, Democratic USA, incredibly powerful. Look at the amount of the world that, that we conquered. And uh, well, that's quite impressive. It's only June 1941, so we have the entire game ahead of us. Uh, incredibly strong economy, incredibly strong divisions. Uh, really, really powerful. Guys, if you enjoyed uh, this guide, uh, this episode, the previous episode, uh, please uh, do not forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. It really helps. Let me know in the comments what you thought about uh, this run. And uh, thank you for watching. I will see you guys uh, very soon in the next version of this guide for Fascist USA. Bye-bye.